Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a new Mocha device. Now this is not something you get at Starbucks, but rather network extension technology that allows you to extend your home network using your existing cable TV or satellite wiring. And the best part about this stuff is that it doesn't interfere with your TV, so you can still get your cable service, yet use your existing wiring as a backbone also for your home computer network. And I found it works much better than Powerline and many of the other solutions that are out there. We've done a ton of content on this already, so I definitely suggest you check out some of my other videos on the topic. And in this one, we're going to look at this new device from Go Coax because this is based on a new Mocha standard that allows for two and a half gigabit speeds between devices. Now the prior Mocha standard allowed for a single gigabit, but it was symmetrical. So you could get a gigabit down and a gigabit up. Uh, this is two and a half gigabits in both directions, but only between the devices themselves. And we'll talk a lot about what that speed will mean for you when we get a little further into this review. Now I'm gonna do my best to try to give you a sense as a general consumer what this is all about, and we're gonna get nerdier the longer we go into the review because there's a lot of things that people are curious about that are a little bit more technical in nature. So I'm gonna do my best to cover both audiences here in this video, and I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I bought one of these adapters myself and then I realized I need about four of them to get the job done for this video. So I reached out to go coax and they let me borrow another three. So I'm gonna be keeping the one I bought and the other three are going to go back to them when we're done because they are on loan to the channel. However, nobody is paying for this review. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these new Mocha adapters are all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The price point on these are about $59 a piece, and you do need two really to get started. Uh, so what I do is I have one uh, down by my router, and I have it plugged into that, and then I plug the router one into my cable TV wiring in my equipment closet. And then for every room where I want to add an extension, I just get another box and plug into the cable jack in that room. Uh, and what these do is allow you to continue using your TV service. So if you've got your cable box plugged into the wall, you take that wire out of the wall and you put it in here where it says TV. And then you connect the wall to the spot here that says Mocha and then your connection is made. And if you are just looking for a simple connection, you're done. Once you get these things connected, they will find each other and they'll bridge your computer network over your cable TV wiring. It's really, really simple. A little later in the video though, we'll go into the control panel that you can access on each of these devices and see exactly how that connection is doing. Uh, but for most people, once you make that initial connection, you're done and you'll get a really high quality, high bandwidth connection between different points in your house that uh, I think is a lot better than Wi-Fi. Now on the back here, you've got an ethernet jack. Unfortunately, this is only gigabit ethernet. Now for most people, that's going to be fine, uh, but you will not be able to get the full speed of the adapter to each client. The speed is going to be shared by all the adapters in the house. So if you do have clients that are frequently sending large files to each other, you could have more people doing that at the same time on your network than you would with the prior generation Mocha, because now you've got two and a half gigabits versus just one gigabit, and that will allow more data to be transited across your network at the same time over the coax. But all of these devices on your network share that two and a half gigabits, but having that greater backbone, I think for some instances will be uh, a very big improvement. Uh, your power goes in here. Uh, on the top, you've got a security button, and we'll talk about this later in the video. So what you can do is pair these up by pushing this button here. And when you do that, the traffic is encrypted between the different clients so that uh, if somebody were to try to snoop in on your network, they won't be able to access the contents of the data that are going across. And you get some indicator lights here for uh, what you're experiencing on your network. So once you connect it to coax, you'll see that Mocha light light up. When you connect your ethernet up, that will light up. And of course, the power light will be there as well. Very simple to get going, and what we're going to do now is start with a very basic speed test to see how fast things can go between two points. All right, so we've got a little network here set up on the desk. This is kind of an, an ideal situation just to get the best possible throughput. 
And what I've got here are the two Mocha adapters connected to each other via coax cables. And then each of these laptops is connected via Ethernet to the back of these devices. So what's happening here is that this MacBook is going to send data through its Ethernet cable. The adapter will take that data, push it out over coax, it will go into this adapter and then pop out of the other Ethernet cable to this laptop. So it is traversing the coax here to make it all work. I have a splitter in between. And you might be wondering in a tabletop exercise here why we're using a splitter with only two devices. Why not just hook them up directly? Well, the reason is, is that we found the signal was too strong with this short cable. So putting the splitter in the mix weakened the signal a little bit to make it better. So we got the, uh, the right performance out of this. If you just have like a big long cable in your house, you won't need a splitter at all. But if you are having your cable run to multiple rooms, you likely have splitters in different portions of the home. And you're going to want to make sure that you've got Mocha compatible splitters uh, that you're using for those rooms because uh, these things will operate at frequency ranges that some splitters may filter out. So Mocha compatible splitters are definitely the ones to look for. Uh, this splitter was all over my house. I had a bunch of these all over the place when I moved in. And this one only goes 5 to 1,000 megahertz, and it actually was impeding the maximum bandwidth as I was testing this. So you might find uh, your, your own situation to be different than what we're about to test here on the desk because we've got the ideal setup going here. We've got splitters that support the frequency range required. Your home may not have the right splitters, and you might have to go and troubleshoot a bit to get things working. It'll work fine, uh, but it may not work to its highest potential unless you get all of the right splitters hooked up in the right places. And we can have a discussion about that uh, in a future video. So what I'm going to do now here is run the test. We're going to push data from one to the other and see what happens. So let me initiate it now, and that connection is going to be made. And if we look at the screen here and see the bandwidth we're getting, as you can see, we're pushing uh, pretty much what I would get on a straight up Ethernet connection between the two. Really quick here, uh, running at gigabit speeds. We're not getting two and a half gigabits, remember, because uh, the Ethernet jacks on these Mocha adapters can only do a gigabit each. But in a minute, we're going to hook up another two of these and see if we can have two of these tests running at this speed simultaneously, which we couldn't do with the prior generation of Mocha. Now we're going to take a look at latency. In other words, how long does it take for a packet of data to go from one of these devices to the other? And what we're going to do is just a standard ping test here on my Mac. We're going to push it to the other Mac here and see what the latency is. So we're going to initiate that test now. Uh, the one thing that you'll notice with Mocha connections is that it does add a little bit of latency to the mix versus Ethernet. So we're seeing about four milliseconds or so, give or take. That's a couple milliseconds more than you would get again with an Ethernet connection. But if running Ethernet wiring is not feasible, this really isn't bad. Uh, but it will add a marginal amount of latency to your network. So for example, if you were gaming on a server, you might be seeing two or three milliseconds more in latency due to that uh, local latency being introduced by the adapters. But overall, uh, it is very, very minimal here. And again, we've got a lot of bandwidth here to play with too. Okay, so we saw how fast things were in between two different clients here, but now we want to see what the backbone speed really is. So remember, these are being advertised as two and a half gigabit adapters, but we can only get a gigabit out of each one individually. So to test this, we're going to bring another two adapters on board and we're going to have both computers run that network test we just ran simultaneously. And if everything is working correctly, we shouldn't see much of a speed drop after we get the second computer online and transmitting. So let's get all that hooked up and we'll run that test and see what happens. All right, so we've got our four Go coax adapters all connected via coax cable. The splitter we're using is running at a frequency range of 5 to 2300 megahertz, and we're finding that these Mocha certified splitters are the ones you really need to use to get the best performance out of this Mocha 2.5 technology. Each of these Go coax adapters is connected via Ethernet to a computer, and what we're going to be doing now is running the test that we have set up on here. All right, if you look on the left-hand portion of your screen where my mouse is going, I'm going to start a test. So what we're going to do here is have computer one transmit data to computer two. And what we want to look for when this test begins is the bandwidth that we're seeing uh, from computer one to computer two. And as you can see here, we're going at about 
940 megabits per second. That's pretty close to what you would get with a regular gigabit Ethernet connection. So we're getting the uh, max performance out of my Ethernet adapter right now. And now what I'm going to do down here on the right hand side is start the test up from computer 3 to computer 4 and we'll see if we can maintain essentially two simultaneous streams of gigabit traffic. And as you can see here, this uh, gigabit adapter runs a little bit slower than the other one, but we're not seeing any performance degradation on computer one on the left, which means that we are essentially getting pretty close to the advertised backbone speed. We're able to have two gigabits transiting this coax network and we're able to maintain gigabit service to uh, those groups of computers here simultaneously. If we were running with a Mocha 2.0 network right now, we would have seen computer one here's traffic get cut in half. But because we have the backbone, we can essentially transmit data at these speeds simultaneously. And that's the big difference here with Mocha 2.5. Now, one of the things that I really like about these adapters is that they have a really cool web-based control panel that you can log into to troubleshoot things. And by default, the IP address is what you see here on screen, but you can change this and then log into all of them uh, from wherever you are in your home or VPN if you're able to call in remotely. So it's pretty cool to be able to go in and just troubleshoot each one individually if you need to. Uh, this is the device status page. You also get a link rate page that will give you a whole picture of your Mocha network. So right now I've got three devices connected. And as you can see here, we've got all three running on Mocha 2.5. And these are the raw bit rates that each device can achieve and then what the speeds will be between them. So for example, if I wanted to see how fast my connection from device zero to device two might be, you can see that it's 3,500 uh, megabits per second here. But this does not account for all the network overhead that you'll have uh, passing your data back and forth. So that's why they're rating these at a lower uh, two and a half gigabits per second. But this is a great way to get an idea as to the health of your network. Now you might be wondering what happens if we hook up a Mocha 2.0 device to this network? Will that slow everybody down? Well, let's hook one up and see what happens. All right, so we took out one of our Action Tech devices. This is another Mocha compatible device. Works very much the same way that uh, the ones we're reviewing today work, but this is based on the older Mocha 2.0 standard that runs at one gigabit per second. And we've got that now on our Mocha network. Let's take a look at that control panel now and see what we've got. So now you can see that on our Mocha network, we have one Mocha 2.0 device here in position zero, and then two of our Mocha 2.5 devices on our little network here. So you'll look at number one here. Uh, you'll see that one is connecting to zero at this data rate, but one is connecting to two at this data rate because both one and two are Mocha 2.5 adapters, whereas Mocha zero is running at Mocha 2.0 speeds. But the good news is that if we run a quick speed test here, uh, as you'll see that we're getting pretty much the same performance that we had before. Uh, we're able to push about a gigabit of data here uh, without issues from the Mocha 2.0 Go Coax device to the Action Tech device. And even though these are made by two different manufacturers, they're both following the Mocha standard. So you're going to get complete compatibility if you've got an older Mocha device on your network. It just won't run as fast as uh, these new ones will when talking to each other. Now these Go Coax devices have an MPS button on the top that allow for easy encryption uh, between all of the different devices you've connected on your Mocha network. And this is a new feature, I believe, in Mocha 2.5. And when you set this up, what happens is, is that uh, nobody could just walk into your home or connect to the outside with a Mocha adapter and get access to your network. Uh, this requires that all of your Mocha devices pair with each other. And once they're paired, all of the traffic between them is encrypted. Now to set this up, you do have to log into the control panel on one of the devices to start. And they recommend taking all of the other devices off the network while you're in the process of configuring this. Uh, so let's go over to the web-based control panel here. And if you click on security settings, you'll see an option here once it loads up uh, to enable this encryption across your network. So if you go over here to the DEXT band and click on security enabled, 
and then add in a password of your own here. Uh, you can click save, which I'm going to do now just with the default password because we're just demoing here, and then reboot. Uh, what will happen is, is that you'll now have an encrypted network ready to go on your device. And once this one comes back up again, uh, the Mocha light here will light up blue. And all we'll need to do is just push this button uh, on this device and one that we want to pair with it to get the encryption sent or configured uh, with the other Go Coax devices on the network. And that's what we're going to do right now is connect a second device and see how this encryption works and what kind of performance impact it might have. All right, so this is the device that we configured already, and you can see the Mocha light is blue here. I added this second device to the Mocha network with the coax cable, but you'll notice that its Mocha light is dark. It's not on the network at all because the other device is encrypted now. So what we're going to do is hit the MPS button on the encrypted device. I'm just going to hold it down for about five seconds or so. Unfortunately, you don't get any kind of indication as to when they are in pairing mode. So I found that if you hold the button down on the other one, run over to the second device and hold it down again, that's usually enough to get that blue light lit up there. And if we jump back to our computer uh, screen here with the control panel and just do a refresh, uh, we should now see two of these devices on the network talking to each other. And it looks like they're communicating encrypted at the same data rate as before. But we're going to put this to the test now and run another speed test and see what these encrypted speeds look like. So after enabling encryption, we ran both tests again, and we didn't see any difference in performance, including the multi-computer test that we ran to measure the total amount of backbone bandwidth. So it looks like there is no performance penalty for enabling the encryption. So that's going to do it for this look at the Go Coax Mocha 2.5 adapters. Uh, great bump in performance here. I did notice, though, that these are a lot more susceptible to splitters that may not necessarily be Mocha certified. So if you are having trouble getting top performance, I would start with splitters that you've got throughout your home and replacing them with splitters that are compatible with Mocha. I'll put a link down below in the video description for some that I have used to get to the performance levels that we're at now. That should rectify some issues. If you're still having trouble, there's other things to look at, like the tightness of your connectors across all of your different cable connections throughout the home, the quality of the wiring. There's a lot of things that can introduce interference that can cause issues. We did an interview with the president of the Mocha Alliance who gave us some really good tips on that. So you might want to check out uh, that on my YouTube channel and also on Amazon and some of the Mocha product pages. And hopefully you'll be able to troubleshoot your individual issues uh, but we found these to be working pretty well uh, once we had the right splitters in place. And that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.